first of all, I'd like to express the regrets from Ambassador Nong because he could not make it this morning. Uh, so I can be in the space, but uh, luckily I got this written speech. So uh, it is really a great honor for me to be here at the Diplomats Forum this morning uh, of the Macro Dialogue today. Uh, at the opening ceremony yesterday, His Excellency Prime Minister Imran Khan made a very important speech. I was deeply impressed by his vision and the passion. Uh, I know today at this forum, I see many senior diplomats uh, in this hall, and uh, I think you are very experienced and uh, for the, my uh, vision of the uh, nowadays the world. Uh, from your speeches, I have uh, deepened my understanding on current geopolitical changes and the global challenges. So please allow me to share some news on the theme, uh, foreign policy challenges of future in a changing geopolitical landscape. Uh, as we know that at present, we are experiencing a once-in-a-century pandemic and the big changes unseen in a century. Uh, the global economy is fragile and unilateralism undermines the existing international order and the trend of anti-globalization is on the rise and the challenges of climate change are prominent. Uh, international and regional hotspots are intertwined, and the world is entering another period of turmoil and adjustment. First, the COVID-19 pandemic is still severe. More than 265 million people have been affected around the world. However, we see that some countries have politicized the issue, which has a negative impact on the global anti-pandemic cooperation. And the, the uneven distribution of the vaccine is still prominent, and the gap between the developed and developing countries is still widening. Second, the geopolitical situation has become more tense and uh, a few big powers undermine international cooperation, attempt to provoke ideological and social system confrontation, and set up exclusive uh, small groups. And the regional hotspots, such as Afghanistan, I think most of uh, the speeches have uh, emphasized this issue as have emerged one after another that need due attention. Third, the recovery of uh, the global economy is struggling. Global inflation, rising commodity prices, and the sluggish industrial supply chains all make the recovery momentum of the global economy lower than expected. Economic downturn risks and uncertainties have increased significantly. Poverty, hunger, and debt are rising, especially in low-income countries. Fourth, climate change is a threat to all mankind. Global climate change endangers the Earth's ecosystems and the threatens for survival of millions of people. And the uh, UN Secretary General, Mr. Guterres, has repeatedly emphasized insufficient funding has res restricted the ability of the international community to respond to climate change. Developing countries have suffered a lot the consequences of historical emissions, but have not received the financial and the technical support they deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, re response to a series of global challenges uh, President Xi Jinping proposed the Global Development Initiative when attending the 76th General Debate of the UN General Assembly, calling on the international community 
to accelerate the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and to promote a more robust green and healthy global development, to build a global development community. This major initiative draw a blueprint for advancing the course of global development and international cooperation. The first is to deepen global anti-pandemic cooperation. And China has always advocated deepening international cooperation in vaccines, ensuring the availability and affordability of vaccines in developing countries and making vaccines a global public product. China has provided more than 1.6 billion doses of vaccines to the world and will provide more than 2 billion doses this year. In the next three years, China will provide another $3 billion in international aid to support developing countries' fight against the pandemic and restore economic development. Second is to build a new type of international relations featuring win-win cooperation. China has always opposed any country instigating geopolitical conflicts, engaging in small circles, and forcing third parties to choose sides. China is willing to work with other countries to promote the common values of mankind Practice true multilateralism, safeguard the international system with the United Nations at its core, defend the international order based on international law, and promote inclusive development of the international community. Third is to promote stable recovery of the global economy. China has made a good balance between pandemic prevention and economic and social development. China's economy continues to grow steadily and become the backbone in stabilizing the global economy. China will deepen regional economic interaction, promote trade and investment, liberalization and facilitation, enhance synergy of development strategies and the policy communication with other countries, and maintain the security stability and a smooth flow of global industrial and the supply chains. Fourth is to build a community of our own life on Earth. As the largest developing country, China attaches great importance to the construction of ecological civilization. China has always been a participant, contributor, and leader in global campaign on climate change. China will support the development of green and low carbon energy in developed countries. China will strive to achieve the peak of carbon dioxide by 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2060. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, China has always believed that the big countries should behave accordingly and take the lead in emphasizing equality, credibility, and cooperation showing a great pattern and responsibility and making more efforts and big contributions. China will continue to adhere to openness, inclusiveness, and win-win cooperation, and make new contributions to global unity in fighting the pandemic, promote the recovery and the development of the global economy, improve global economic governance, and made efforts to promote the building of a community with a shared future for mankind. China and Pakistan are at the critical stage of building a closer China-Pakistan community with a shared future in a new era. As always, China views and develops China-Pakistan relations from a strategic and long-term perspective. This year marks the, the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and Pakistan. We should take this occasion as an opportunity and continue to deepen strategic mutual trust, promote the high quality development of CPAC and all-round cooperation in various fields.
and will further encourage the contact of all weather strategic partner, cooperative partnership. A stronger Pakistan and a closer China-Pakistan friendship will, will contribute to the peace and, de and development of the whole region and beyond. Thank you.